Welcome to the Potsford House of Prayer, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? It's a good day to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're gonna open up with a new song today. If you guys know it, just ask that you would just sing it with everything that you have. It's called Gratitude. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> We're just gonna just set our gaze on Jesus this morning. Just set our gaze on Jesus. He's done so, so much. He's, he gave everything for us. He gave it all for us. So let's just give it all for him, all to him this morning. Father God, you're so, so good, God. We give you our lives this morning. We give you everything that we have. We're just so thankful that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, to take away our sin, to take away our shame. God, I just ask that you would, you would refresh us this morning, you would revive us, and you would open our eyes to see your beauty. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Great job, guys. Sounded beautiful. <laughs> All right. Now let's pick it up a little bit. How about that? All right, let's go.
fresh wind. Who needs a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in their life? I need a fresh wind. I need the Holy Spirit just to begin to blow into my life and begin to fill the the inner chambers of my heart and everything that I am and everything that I'm doing. I want the Holy Spirit. I want a fresh wind of God in my life. Amen. And if you think of a sailboat and and out in the middle of the lake and the wind's blowing and I've never been sailing, so I might be just destroying this metaphor here. But I would imagine if the wind's blowing and all of a sudden they they bring up the sail and and then they cut the jib or I don't know what that is. (laughs) I'm going to hear it. But when they they get the sail firm, all of a sudden, that sail just grips and it just begins to pull and and just move the boat, right? It's just this power, instant power when that sail grips. And sometimes we need a fresh wind in our life. Sometimes we need a move of God in our life. And we're wondering how, God, I want that. I want you to blow in the inner chambers of my heart and fill me with with all that you are. But we're not quite sure how to get the sail up. And I want to instruct you here today, or maybe just even encourage you, that sale is complete surrender. Right? When we give it all to God, when we put it in His hands, when we let go of, lose control of, and put it in God's hands. That's almost like you getting that, cranking that sail up. And when we set our gaze on Jesus, the sail goes firm, and it fills with the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to pray for you this morning. That we would come to a place of surrendering to God. To putting it all into His hands. God, search me, know me, go through every chamber of my heart. And you might find some stuff there that I'm not proud of, God. But I know there's no greater feeling. There's no greater point in life where the Spirit of God fills the chambers of my heart. God, and I pray that we would surrender this morning, that there would be an outpouring of devotion from the hearts of the the people here today and those watching online. God, that there would just be a movement of surrender in our lives to see you fill our lives, to see the fresh wind of God. Because some of us really need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Maybe some of us even need a fresh start. And today's the day to get down on one knee and say, God, I surrender everything to you. You know who you are. So, Father, I pray as we kind of end this portion of our service, God, that you would meet our surrender, which I know you do. When devotion draws in the presence of God, God, pour out your spirit this morning. We surrender. Just have your way in our midst. I don't know what the next day or week or month or year is going to look like. But God, I'm going to let you fill my sails. I'm going to let you begin to direct me and lead me in the way of everlasting. So come, Holy Spirit. You hear the hearts. You see them. Fill us this morning with a fresh wind. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a shout this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You can have a seat. God is good. A lot of things happening. Glad you're here this morning. I want to welcome those joining us online. If you do not know, I am Pastor Jesse, and I want to just welcome you with, uh, from the bottom of my heart to, to be with us this morning and for you joining us online to, to be joining us as well. I believe God has something for you, and uh, hopefully God has really begun to move on your heart, begin to strengthen you, encourage you, and find you right where you're at. Uh, and, and I pray that God continues to do that. Uh, But we're going to get into the Word of God here shortly. But I do have, I think, a few announcements. We have, uh, is is basic this Monday. Yeah, I think there's a special event going on too, right? But anyway, so we have basic from 7 to to 8.30. uh, And we also have youth. We have youth this week. But there is a change with youth. There's something exciting going on. We're actually going bowling this Wednesday. 
So if you are a parent of a youth or know someone that is of youth age, uh, that's that sixth grade to 12th grade, we're going to be meeting at North Bowl Lanes at 7 o'clock. Uh, so we're going to have fun bowling. Bring a friend. Uh, it's all going to be paid for uh, for you teens, except for the snacks. Uh, we don't have enough money to fill your bellies <laughs> the way you guys eat. So... Uh, <laughs> So if you want snacks from the, the, the nacho bar or whatever, uh, bring money for that. But other than that, we're, we're going to pay for your, your, your uh, time of bowling uh, and all your, your shoe rentals and all that stuff. So uh, we always have a great time every time we go. Uh, so come on out to that. Uh, bring a friend. And also, we have our small group start this week. Who's excited for small groups? All right. We have... A lot of people rejoining our small groups. We have a lot of new people, too, so that's great. We, that's one of the ways that we get to connect and, and uh, learn about each other and, and grow with each other. So we're excited for our small groups coming up uh, this week. They start. So if you signed up for a Monday group, it will start tomorrow. And, and you know the drill. All right. So I think, I think that's it for announcements. No worship. I don't know. No worship. Yes, no worship. Uh, you got me distracted here. <laughs> uh, growth track. There we go. They're giving me some pointers. Uh, growth track is one of the ways that we say, hey, come on, uh, come on board. What we're doing here at the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, you matter. Uh, so uh, if you've you're been coming here and said, hey, I like what's going on here. I want to be a part of what this church is doing, not only in here, but to reach our community, uh, then growth track step one is for you. Uh, so that'll be beginning the first Sunday of the month, and it takes place at 1 o'clock. Uh, so this first Sunday in October, uh, if you sign up for Growth Track, you do need to sign up. You do need to register for that, but that will be at 1 p.m. on that first Sunday. And I think that's it, hopefully. All right, so today we actually have a guest speaker. I won't be speaking myself. Uh, I have someone that I completely admire uh, and and. and uh, uh, just has uh, someone who's influenced my life and changed my life and impacted me greatly, uh, and that is my mom. Uh, she'll be coming up. Janice uh, will be sharing God's word with us this morning. Uh, she's a woman of God, a woman devoted to his word, and throughout my life I've seen her time and time again, year after year, be devoted to God and devoted to God's word, uh, and it's really impacted me and given me a vision to be someone who's devoted to the word of God. So, uh, Janice, come on up. All right, let's stand, yes. I get my humor from her. If I shake, you know, Jesse, the apple doesn't fall back far from the tree. Okay. So today's word today, I, uh, what I'm bringing in is it's a, a call back to the word. That's our title of a, of a, a small mini-series that I'm going to be doing, a call back to the word of God. There's a great need in this hour to get back to the word of God. If you go back and, I don't know, when I was a child, you could ask basic biblical questions to just about every kid in my class. No matter what you were, whether you were Protestant or Catholic, there was a basic understanding of the word. You could ask basic questions and they could answer it. But today, there, there, there is a, a, a severe lack of the word of God. And, and that opens the door for believing something that is not true. One of the greatest dangers for us is to take what little we know and then create a God after our own image because we don't know enough to see him in his big picture. We start adding our own pieces of what he should be. And that comes from our own heart. And now the Bible says man's heart is wicked. He died for us. He brought us into fellowship. But deep down inside, until he returns, there is a tendency to follow after our own heart. It was not Adam and Eve. They messed up. We mess up. 
We're in the same boat. So we're going to talk about a call back to the Word of God. Now the Word of God really is, the Word is God himself. God revealed himself through the Word. If you want to know God, he reveals himself through the Word. There are times he reveals, and he does. You hear in the Middle East, there are times they have no, had no one, no teaching of the Bible, and God in his great mercy is, is appearing in dreams and visions. You hear often the testimony is a man in white appeared to me in my room at night. God will reveal himself. But that is very unusual. He has given us his word so that we could come to know him in a deep level. What the Lord wants to do is raise up leaders and lights in the age of that we are in. Those who know God for the hour of crisis that's coming on the earth. And that's his goal. That's his goal for you. He's not raising you up to be a pew sitter, someone who has to go to someone else to figure things out. He's raising you up yeah. to get in the word, to have an answer for your neighbor. Because your neighbor's going to be looking as things get more confusing and more you know, tumultuous. They're going to be looking for answers. And when they come knocking at your door, you want to be able to give them the answer. That's what you're here for. We're going to start with Ephesians 1, 13, 16 through 19. That's an apostolic prayer, if you don't know. This is a, Paul, a prayer that Paul wrote. Oh, I take that back. It is a prayer that God wrote through Paul's hands and says, this is a prayer. You pray this, it will answer. If you want to know what to pray, find out the prayers in the Bible and pray them because they're God's prayers. You know there's an answer. The answer is yes. So Ephesians 1, 13, 16 through 19. It says, I just want to make sure it's up there. Okay. Having also believed... You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit. I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. That's how it starts out. Who's he talking to here? Is he talking to the lost? Is he talking to those that don't know God? No, he's talking to believers, those who have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. He's, matter of fact, Paul is asking on our behalf. He's asking for you. He's asking for me. He's praying that the church would be filled with the knowledge of God. Let's continue, find out what he's praying for. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, you the church, a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling you get that? It's the hope of his calling, that you would, what are the riches of his inheritance in the saints, and what's the boundless greatness of his power. In this prayer, God is asking, Paul is asking God to give the church a spirit of wisdom, a revelation of him, and that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. That's what the, Paul is asking for. That's a big prayer. Paul is asking on behalf of you and I that you and I would acquire the spirit of revelation, that you and I would be growing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the knowledge of, it's an endless, it's growing. It's not, I got it, it's growing. He's asking for a growing in the knowledge of God. There's a quote by A.W. Tozer. If you ever get a chance to read a book, it's called The Pursuit of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. Read it. It is a great book of the pursuit of the knowledge of God. But here's a quote out of that. The most important thing in your Christian life is what you know and what you believe about God. I'm going to say that again because it's a good quote. The most important thing in your life is what we know and what we believe of God, about God. Because you see, what we know about God and what we believe about God is our root system. It's like a plant. A plant needs a healthy root system. It won't produce fruit. It'll, it'll be sagged. If it doesn't have a good root system, it'll fall over. 
It needs a root system. Well, it's the same thing that you and I, the knowledge, our knowledge of God, what we know about him, what is actually true about him, I want to say that, what is actually true about him is what our, our root system is. Our lives are the fruit of our root system. There's another quote from A.W. Tozer. Listen to this. I don't think I gave it to them. It says, 10,000 lesser problems are solved when a man comes to the right understanding of God. 10,000 problems are solved when a man comes to the right understanding of God. If you have a right understanding of God, there's a lot of struggles you're dealing with would be, would be eliminated. They would become vapor if we had a right understanding of God. It's because we don't have a right understanding of God. A good root system, a good root system makes our lives healthier makes our lives more mature, makes our lives usable. It produces fruit. So growing in the knowledge of God, that's what we're going to be talking about, growing in the knowledge of God. Now, who knows God better than God? <laughs> no one knows God better than God. So if we need to fill our minds up with what God says about God, I mean, it's good when Jesse tells us things about God. That is good. You want to listen to those things. God gives us leaders who, who, listen, who read the word, who study the word, and present the truth. But there's, there's more to it. You need to go to God. What God says about God. There's a tendency in the human heart to take what little we know, like I said earlier, and make it an image of God in our own minds. So it's important to know what God says about God. What, who he is? Who is he? I remember someone asked me, they said, is, is he male or female? And I said, well, he says he's spirit. <laughs> it doesn't really say. It refers to him as a he, but is, he's not a humanoid man, God the Father. He's a spirit. So who is God? Who is God? Who is he? What does he feel? What are his emotions? What are, I think Mike Bickle says, one of the worst things to th do is think God is happy when he's mad. That's the most dangerous place to be. Or to be, think he's mad when he's really glad. So you got to know, how does God feel? What he thinks and feels about you. That's important. That gives you stability, confidence, to repent and run into his presence when you understand how he feels about you. What he's done, what he's doing, what he's going to do. Do you know most of the Bible, most of the, old, mo most of the prophets hasn't even come to pass yet? Majority of the Bible hasn't even come to pass yet. There is a lot he's about to do, and we don't have a clue, most of us. You know what he's going to do. So when we fill our minds with what God says about God, what God says about God, we are transformed. Now one of the greatest hindrances of growing in the knowledge of God is complacency. In other words, it's... Uh, we have a tendency to become settled in what we think we know. That's one of the most uh, the <coughs> hindrances to growing in the knowledge of God. We're settled in what we think we know. We have a, a, in the book of jo Job, you have Elihu is a friend of Job. Now most of the time, you know, I, as I read the book of Job, I say, well, you, most of the times these give poor advice. But if you read it, so I would ask the Lord, why do you want me to read this? Why do you have it? You know, most of the things they gave him weren't even, weren't even true. They weren't encouraging to Job. But I'm telling you, God put it in there, so there has to be truth in what they're saying. Well, one of the things is, is uh, Elihu came to Job, and he said to him in Job, it's in 3626, he said, Behold, God is great, and we don't know him. 
the, what's one of the biggest, the most wisest things in the Bible from somebody who usually gave very bad advice. But God had it in there. Why? Because it is so true. It is so true. Behold, God is great, and we don't know him. I'm telling you, he's bigger than, he's kinder than, he's more powerful than, he's wiser than, he's more just than, he's more wrathful than, he's more righteous than. I could keep going. He's more of those things than we know. Um, he's sort of like, I kind of, kind of liken it to a diamond, a, a, a multifaceted diamond. Now, I wouldn't take the diamond that I got when I was first married <laughs> and use this. I remember when we were first married, when he asked me to marry him, we went and picked out a diamond. And he gave me, he says, well, what would you rather have, a really big diamond or furniture? <laughs> I said, furniture. <laughs> so I got a really little diamond. So uh, it's hard to describe using that, but, okay. A multifaceted diamond. When you take a diamond, you, you see them on movies. You and I don't have one of those. When you see them, ooh, the, you know, I don't know, they'll name a fancy diamond, and they'll pick it up, and they'll hold it to the light, and they'll turn it over and over. There's different facets, and every time you turn it, there's a different light. There's a different fraction of light it reflects and, it, and every time and it's and it's all sides of it and every one is single is different that's sort of like what God is you and I really we only know a couple of the facets oh I know his mercy whoa I know his kindness whoa I know his but there's a, and I can go on but there's a lot of facets especially when you're reading the word as a whole and you're going oh Oh, that's not the God I know, but it is the God you know. It's the God you don't know. It's a part of who he is, and it's a fullness of it. And that's the thing. God is God, and we don't know him. He is so much more, and we can't figure him out. But it's sort of like that. I remember having a dream once. I had a dream. I was walking down a road, and a man on a horse came riding up to me. And he pulled up his horse, and he pulled the reins back, and he says, tell me what you know about God. And I started rattling off what I knew about God. And suddenly this panic started to grow with deep within my gut because I was running out of things to say. I realized I really didn't know as much about God as I thought I did. And then I woke up. I'm telling you, I came to the terms of my lacking. I still deal with my lacking. I still lack. I've come to the terms with your lacking. I've come to the terms of your lacking in the knowledge of God. I need, we need a fresh, living, ever-growing, I want to say ever-growing view of God. It has to come. It has to come. You and I are on a journey knowing God, but we're just not going to stumble into it. It just doesn't happen. It's not like a, a, a fairy having a wand and praying and you've got it. You don't just stumble into it. We have to diligently, diligently pursue and seek it. And if this is true, then how do we grow in the knowledge of God? If we're told God tells us to diligently seek it, if we've got to look, it, look for it, then how do we do it? Well, God hasn't left us in the dark. There are several places in the word that he gives us a plan. He gives us a process. It's a process of how to grow in the knowledge of God. And we're going to look at one today. It's a clear process. It's a clear plan. And he gives it to us in Proverbs 2. This is just one <clears throat> of several places in the word where the process to grow in the knowledge of God is there. Proverbs 2, 1 through 5. My son, if you will receive my words 
and treasure my commandments within you. Make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. That is a clear plan at how you grow in the knowledge of God. There are three ifs in that, and there are, there's a promise. And I'm going to talk about the promise first. Let's look at the promise first. Proverbs 9, I mean Proverbs 2, 5. It says, you, th you, you will then understand the fear of the Lord, and you will discover the knowledge of God. I repeat, he says, you will discover the knowledge of God. It doesn't say might or maybe or kind of. It says you will if you do those things. But if you do those things, you will. There's a promise. If you give yourselves to the three ifs, you will grow in the knowledge of God. It's a given. OK, this is a promise. Let's look at the first if. The first if. It's found in verse 1. If you will receive my words and treasure my commandments. Receive my words and treasure my commandments. It's, it's called valuing the word of God. Valuing the word. It's been said, what you can live without, you will live without. What you can live without, you will live without. Psalm 19 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I love that chapter. It was written by King David. And King David was called the man after my own heart by God himself. In Psalm 119, David is sharing his lifelong love for the word. I ask you, what's your secret pleasure? What's your secret pleasure? What's my secret pleasure? David's was the word. His secret pleasure was the word. See, David couldn't live without it. He understood what he, would, what he was willing to live without. He'd live without it. But he was not willing to live without the commands of the Lord. I have to realize, and you have to realize, that you can no longer live without the word of God. You can no longer live without it. You cannot live without this. You will slowly wither up, slowly wither up. You can't live without it. But you've got to realize that. You have to realize it. I have to realize it. Verse 2a says, make your ear attentive to wisdom. Attentive to wisdom. What does that mean, attentive to wisdom? Now, if you have kids or teenagers, you know the difference between hearing and listening. <laughs> you know. You know? They're hearing you, but are they listening? And that's what I'd say. <laughs> are you listening to me? <laughs> and there's a difference between hearing and listening. And that's what having being an ear that's attentive is that you're in the listening category. Another place that it's kind of described quite easily of what having an attentive heart is in Revelations 1.3. It says, blessed is the one who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and keep the things that are written in it. He's saying here, just don't hear what it says. Listen to what it says. Respond to it. Verse 2b, it says, incline your heart to understanding. Incline your heart to understanding. Incline your heart. You have to incline your heart towards it. You have to desire it. You've got to posture your heart towards it. It's very much, it's, um, it's like purposely acquiring the taste for the word. You've got to purposely incline your heart towards it. I don't think, though maybe there might be a few people here, most people don't have an automatic love for the taste of coffee. 
The first time you ever had a cup of coffee, you ever pull out your parents' cup of coffee and took a good swig. My mother drank hers black. You take a good drink of <laughs> Who'd want to drink that? But I'll tell you, it's like coffee. You have to acquire a taste for it. You take a bit of it, and then you taste it again. And, and then you know, oh, man, everybody drinks, especially as when I got, you know, you got as a, a young adult, everybody was drinking coffee. So what do you got to do? You got to drink coffee. So you acquire, but you do, you acquire a taste, but now I can't go without coffee. <laughs> That's the first thing I do when I get up. I have to have coffee. I've acquired, it's the same thing with the word of law, but of the Lord, the word. It has to be an acquired taste. Most of the time, it's, it's an acquired taste. You incline your heart towards it. You've decided, I need, I, I can't live without this. I'm going to, I'm going to acquire a taste for it. And I'm telling you, you start spending time regularly, regularly, regularly in the Word of God, and you will acquire a taste to the place where you can't live without it. Now let's look at the second if, verse 3. If you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. It says cry out. It doesn't say, oh, Lord, please. It says <laughs> cry out. You raise your voice. God, I need understanding. I don't get it. I need understanding. If you raise your voice, if you cry out, and raise your voice for understanding. James says, you have not because you ask not. We have not because we ask not. We don't have the understanding of God, the revelation of, the, of God, a fuller, re we have a revelation, but the fuller revelation, a growing revelation is because we don't ask. Luke eleven nine 9 says, I tell you, if you keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. If you keep on seeking, you will find. If you keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. It has to do with keep asking. You don't ask once, you keep asking. You keep seeking. You keep knocking. In other words, fostering a lifestyle of crying out for understanding. It has to be a part of your prayer life. It has to be part of your interaction and, voice and interaction and talk with God every day. Lord, I'm asking you to grow in the knowledge of God. Lord, I'm asking you to grow in the knowledge. Of Make it. He can handle broken records. Just keep asking for it. That's what he says to do. And we're going to look at the third if. The third if. He says, if you seek, if you seek her. The word seek there in, in its original language has means search. It means strive after. It means search out by any means. I like that one. Search out by any means. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures. See, the knowledge of God is a lifelong search. Any measure taken. It's a lifelong search. There's a title of a book that I like. I've read years ago, and I've read it several times. It's called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. What you and I need, what I need, is a long obedience in the same direction. A lot of times we have short obedience, and then we get drawn away. We get too busy or something. But it's a long obedience in the same direction. You cannot run with the horses until you can run with man. That was one of the... Quotes that changed, one of the quotes that changed my life, quotes from the word. If you want to run with the horses, Janice, you got to learn to run with man. You know, long obedience in the same direction. There's a couple of other short sayings that have been, oh, I don't know, I want to say poster child. Um, another one is, if you don't quit, you win. It's a simple one. If you don't, if you don't quit, you win. If you keep going, if you, you don't quit, you will end up growing in the knowledge of God if you keep at it. Another one is, if you drop the ball, pick it up again. If you drop, that's as easy as can be. If you drop the ball, you've made a decision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend time in the Word every day, every day, before I go to work. I'm going to set my alarm. 
half hour earlier, get up, swallow two cups of coffee really fast. That's what I started doing. I, I decided I, I was afraid, matter of fact, I started working outside the house for the first time, and I was afraid I would lose God in the business. So I began to set my alarm a half hour early, have the coffee pot ready, and I would swig down two cups of black coffee quickly so I could, I know, but to wake up enough to be ready to then get the kids up to get ready for school and then for me to go to, to work. So um, if you drop the ball, pick it up again. The third if is about a lifelong commitment for the knowledge of God. That entails rearranging your lifestyle like I just talked about when I decided, I decided I was afraid I would, well, I, would, I would lose out because I would be too busy. Because before I was at home and I didn't, I could, um, you know, send the kids off to school, have some time by myself and spend time in the Word, go for a walk and sit in the back in the woods on a stump and read the Word. I mean, that. But I finally was going to be working full time and I decided I can't live without it. I'm, gonna, I, I'm afraid I'll fall away. And I'm telling you, there was such a difference in my walk with the Lord. When I talk about that root system, I went from going like this. I mean, I was growing. I was growing a little bit. But when I started that, it changed my trajectory completely. The trajectory of my life with God com completely changed when I did that. And I've been doing it ever since. There's a passage in Isaiah 64, and it says, oh, I love this, because when I read it in the Word, I can feel the emotions of God. He says, there's no one who stirs himself up to take hold of me. Can you hear the emotion of God? He's telling Isaiah this. He says, Isaiah, there is no one who stirs himself up to take hold of me. God wants us to take hold of him. He wants us to, to, to stir ourselves up, to grow in the knowledge of who he is, what he's doing, where he's going, how he's going to do it what he feels, what he's thinking, what does he think about this church, what does he think about the person next to you in your pew, what does he think, he wants you to know those things. No one stirs himself up to take hold of me. The emotions of God, they're so real there. See, Jesus, the bride and good God and, God and the king is calling us. He wants us to understand him. He wants it, that's the desire of his heart. I want you to understand me. I'm going to close with another quote from A.W. Tozer. It says, God talks to the man who cares. That's another one. Man, Tozer's a good. He's good. He's got some wisdom. God talks to the man who cares. You see, it's in here. It's in here. It's in here. It's hidden in plain sight for the one who cares. And the question is, do you care? Yes, I know deep down inside, there's something in there. I know that, I've, I've lived that life. There's something inside of me, it does, I do care. I do care. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good word. Let's stand. Your worship team up here to close us out. I love how it, <clears throat> Proverbs says, "Will you seek? Will you seek for the knowledge of God as for hidden treasure? As for hidden treasure." Now that word treasure, he's not talking about a few dollars. He's talking about millions. And if I was to tell you, "Hey, there's there's million dollars." $3 million, $10 million, 500000 If it's somewhere in this church and the one who finds it gets to keep it, it can be anywhere, hidden in the walls, under chairs. How much time would you spend just demolishing this place, trying to find that money, trying to find that treasure, right? Yet God says, I have something so much more valuable than any money can get you. I have a treasure that's so valuable, and it's knowing me. It's knowing me, walking with me. 
being a part of me. So much for our values is will you seek it like hidden treasure? And I want to encourage you this morning when you leave this place to begin to rearrange what you prioritize and how valuable God really is. God is great, but we don't really know him. And I want to give you a charge this morning as we leave to rearrange your life. And maybe some of us need to even repent. And, and that's what I, I kind of want to throw out there. And repentance isn't a bad thing. Repentance is a good thing. Repentance is when we turn to God, we ask him for forgiveness for, for us going after other things. And God, give me the grace and strength to go hard after you. God, I want to be one that runs with the horses. Help me, Lord Jesus. I repent for going after other things. And today I set my focus and my gaze upon you and your word. Because, God, you're more valuable than anything. And if that's you this morning, God's given you a gift. And he's saying it's called repentance. It get, allows you to get rid of what was and begin and step into who I am in you and who you are in me. So if we could, just let's bow our heads for a moment. If you're watching online bow your head too. Man, God's speaking to you. And just take a moment. Take a moment of surrender. Let fresh wind fill your sails. Say, God, I repent for going after other things. God, I repent for laying aside my desire for your word. I, I repent for, you know, just letting other tasks and things get in the way. Lord, I repent for never even thinking of, of going to you first and foremost. Or I, I repent that I've never gotten into the word to get to, to know you, God. Whatever your repentance is, just use that gift that God's given you this morning because I'm telling you, it's going to free you. It's going to free you from condemnation. It's going to free you from the chains and the bonds that have held you back. And it's going to set you on a path and a course of knowing and growing in the revelation and the knowledge of God. Father, I repent. I repent, Jesus. other things take priority. I repent for not seeing the value of who you are and knowing you. God, forgive me. Set me free to know you and run hard after you, Jesus. Set me free. to open the, the word of God and to encounter you. Set me free, Jesus, to take the word of God and begin to see the facets of life and the beauty of Almighty God. I'm telling you, if you mean it, God will set you free. And God will bring you to a deep intimacy and understanding of God. It's going to be more than one day. It's going to be more than one week. It's going to be more than one year. But if, if you let him, he'll take you on a, a long-term path of growing in, in the understanding and the knowledge of God. For he is great and there's no one greater. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you've heard all about God, or maybe you don't know anything about God and you came into this place and this understanding that God knows you and God loves you and God wants you to know him, but you feel like, man, there's a separation. I, 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 I just can't cross the gulf to get to know you, God. And, and that's why Je God, uh, God the Father sent his son, Jesus Christ. See, he sent them so that he could take away the things that separate us from God. 
God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You see, God the Father did that for you. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that if you would receive what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you, and you would surrender your life to him just like Jesus surrendered his life to God that God would take you where you're at and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and give you the righteousness of his son and bring you into right relationship with God and if you're in that place this morning and you're recognizing I'm far from God I need to know you God I need to be uh, someone that, that knows you walks with you loves you I want to encounter I want to live with a real and living God then all you have to do is ask, cry out, and receive. Repent. And God will hear you. And God will cleanse you. And God will fill you with his Holy Spirit. If that's you this morning, I just want to encourage you to do that. If you're watching online, I want to encourage you to do that. If you're someone that's far from God, and today is the day that Holy Spirit is, is asking you to make that commitment, maybe for the first time or maybe once again, to give your life completely, to surrender it all to Jesus Christ. If that's you this morning, how about you raise your hand? How about that first action of commitment? I need this in my life. I want this in my life. I've been far from you, God. And today, I want to surrender everything to you. Amen. Amen. God sees those hands. Thank you, Jesus. You're watching online, you can get your hand up too. It's not about someone seeing it. It's about God seeing it. And let's pray this prayer together. It's a powerful, the most powerful prayer that sets you free and brings you into the life of God and Jesus Christ. And that's this. Father, forgive me my sins. I receive what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. Only you can make me as white as snow. Only you can make me as white as snow. And today I receive your Holy Spirit. Today I receive your Holy Spirit. Today you've cleansed me. You've cleansed me. You've set me free. You've set me free. And you've brought me into the family of God. And you brought me into the family of God. My life is no longer my own. But my life is now in the hands of God. I surrender it all to you, Jesus. Come live inside of me. Praise the Lord. And I promise you, if you said that prayer, God heard you, God cleansed you, God's filled you, and God has brought you into the family of God. If you're watching online, let us know that you prayed that prayer. There's a link below. You can click, and we're going to pray with you and send you a gift that's going to help you on your faith journey. And if you said that prayer here today, come see me after the service. I would love to hear the commitment that you just made to Jesus Christ. Amen. And I would love to just encourage you and pray with you and strengthen you in that walk. But if you did make that decision, you just made the best decision of your life. Amen. God bless. All right. It's the great word of God that was shared with us. Let's leave this place recommitted to know God through his word. Amen. God bless. We're going to have our, our prayer team come up. Uh, if you need prayer for anything, they're going to pray with you, stand with you, uh, and encourage you. Uh, but always remember, you only have one life to live. There's no do-overs or spawn points. You have one life to live. Live it for Jesus, and you will never, ever be disappointed. God bless. Our worship team, play us off. If you need prayer, just come on up and see our prayer team. Oh, uh -huh.